Hey there, Alina Wilson from Estimate Mastery here. Super excited to talk all about Xactimate Sketch shortcuts. So whether you're a newbie or you're an advanced user, I've got shortcuts for you. Let's go take a look at what we can do in Sketch in Xactimate. <music> So let's go ahead and get started in the sketch screen. I'm already in an estimate in Xactimate and I'm right here on the left-hand side ribbon under sketch. First couple of shortcuts I'm gonna show you are pretty basic, but some of you advanced uh, users might learn a few things here too as well. The first one I'd like you to learn is for the interior is for R for room. And if you hover over each of these, if you forget in the future, just feel free to hover. We also have that list of shortcuts uh, Print it up for you down below if you want to go ahead and click that link. You can also download something that you can put on your, your wall of your office. It's a little bit more helpful as well. But I'm just going to hover over room and you can see there R for room pops up. So if I hover in the sketch work play, uh, space here and just tap my R on my keyboard, then the room comes up and I can just left click once to place the room. Now if I place the room in the window, notice that if I just clicked once, it gives me a 12 foot by 12 foot room. All right, if, however, I tap R on my keyboard and I left click, hold and drag, I can drag out whatever size room I want. And this starts to get really interesting whenever you wanna, like you just saw that there, maybe you didn't catch it, let me do that again. When you wanna start filling rooms next to each other, you can, it's like this clicking motion that you can sometimes get it, there we go, to expand to the same uh, as the room next door. And then maybe, you know, if it's the same uh, width, you could address, or same height, you could address the width, what, whatever you want to create, it has a couple of different actions with this, this tool. So I can, you know, just do the 12 foot by 12 foot, and then if I come down here, I can add another room, and sometimes it'll pop in, see how it's 12 foot by 12 foot, but then if I hover, it comes in like so. Uh, just watch that, because sometimes it'll get some one foot, or one, sorry, one inch offsets, one to two inch offsets can happen at your corners, so just keep an eye on it. It didn't do that to me today, I don't have any offsets, but I have seen it do that in the past, so just watch out for that. So that's a couple of different ways that you can add the room. I think the main thing that most people don't know is that you can left click, hold and drag uh, rooms out. So for me though, it still usually is just faster for me to place a room and then quickly use the, uh, the measurements just by typing them in. It's just the way that I've gotten used to using this over the, the course of the many years I've been doing this. But uh, choose whatever works for you, but there you go, you've got some options. Second shortcut I wanna cover is D for door. So D or, D or, or doorway is how they list it here. So D, you can go ahead and just load that to your cursor and then click once to set the doors in the room. You can just go ahead and go around, just keep hitting D. If you wanna keep that door tool on your cursor, you can actually hold down your control key and you can add as many doors as you want. So if you hold down your control key, I can keep adding doors as long as I'm far enough away. It's setting a two foot six by six foot eight door as its default. If I want maybe a garage door, I can left click, hold and drag uh, a large door here. It will actually change the type of door depending on how wide the door is. So that's gonna be an overhead door. Here, if I do a, I think it's over six foot, it'll do a double door. And so you've got some options there, depending on how you left click, hold and drag, you could do a little baby door. So you can actually control the width of the door. If I have an exterior door, maybe three foot, three foot six by six foot eight, whatever um, your standard is for an exterior door. So there's some options there for doors. And all I'm doing is holding down my control key this entire time with that door tool loaded. So that's one of my favorite well, my second favorite basic shortcut is the door tool. So let me get some of these guys out of here. You can also hold down your control key to go ahead and select multiple if you need to delete multiple things. And let's look at the window tool. Guess what, it's W for window. Same thing, I can either set the, the window in the wall and just use the default preferences. Watch your preferences on this. Make sure that it's the right height um, because you don't see that on the diagram, but it, it will definitely affect what you're doing on your um, sketch here. So we can do the same thing with the window tool. I can tap W, hold down my control key, and I can draw out little, little windows here for us. Uh, I can do big windows, I can do whatever we want. Uh, it won't do anything fancy though if you uh, drag a large or small window, it doesn't do anything fancy. But um, what we can do is then make sure we got the height correct so maybe I want, you know, in the properties here. The other thing I would suggest, and you might see how I'm having some difficulty selecting that window, I would 
definitely recommend that you get an external mouse. It can be wireless. I just have a wired gaming mouse. Um, it can be wireless that you don't use the trackpad on your laptop. Having to zoom in and out and do some of these factors. Yeah, there's some key strokes you can learn that'll help with the zoom in and zoom out. But I just love to be able to zoom in and out using the the wheel between my, my left and right mouse uh, here. If you have, um, you know, uh, just a basic mouse without the wheel it's like five bucks to get a mouse that's wireless like to get this yeah on amazon so you find one with a mouse wheel and that way you can roll in and out and that way uh you won't do what i just did which is select the, the wrong thing i'm trying to select the window so in order to do that i can really zoom in here because with that middle uh, wheel there and really get him selected and that's what i'm looking to address the properties so let's say that the height i don't know it's one foot uh, like so we can adjust all of that. And I'm constantly going between that mouse wheel and the next shortcut I'm gonna show you, the hand. Uh, this is, it's called pan, I believe. Uh, that's the technical word for it. It's down here. Uh, it's the space bar. This is the pan tool. We call it the Michael Jackson glove when we're teaching classes because that's just makes it stick in your mind. Um, so that will move around so I can zoom in and then I can move around to see the particular thing that I'm looking for. So I really love the use of the mouse wheel and the space bar, which is your pan or Michael Jackson glove tool. That's hard to say many times fast. So those are, those are two mobility tools I found really useful. So R for room, D for door, W for window, use your mouse wheel, use your space bar. Second thing that I always find really useful is your elevation views. So those are down here on your bottom right. Uh, there's three of them, one, two, and three. One is plan view. We are looking at a one-dimensional piece of paper. That's why number one, plan view, is the, the first dimension. Then we have the third dimension, which makes it 3D. Just tap three on your keyboard. And then I can left click, hold, and drag. I can pan out I'm using my mouse wheel. Zoom out, excuse me. Zoom in using that mouse wheel. And you can actually take a look at the elevations of a house, take a look at the interior of, of rooms, all kinds of fun things you can do in 3D mode. So going back to plan view, that's your number one. You've got one, you've got three, what is two? Two is what's called elevation view. So I can view just the elevation right here and see what's going on with my windows. And it's a nice uh, way to readjust something if maybe I'm like, oh, that window, should that looks funky. Um, you can also copy and paste windows here, control C, control V. You can paste uh, windows over and over. You can do all kinds of fun things in elevation view. Sometimes you can do this sort of thing in 3D. For some reason, it tends to crash my Xactimate sometimes. I don't know if it's just the version I have. Um, I'm using the desktop version, not the online version. So for some reason, it just doesn't wanna play ball sometimes um, if I edit in 3D view. Um, yeah, sometimes this is really, eh, take a gamble today, see if it'll do it or not. But I like that number two, elevation view two on your keyboard will give you the elevation view and then you go back to plan view so i move in and out with that like i said that that mouse wheel we've got your pan tool and i'm constantly checking elevations uh, with the 3d so i can see what's going on so those are my big you know big ones for the interior sketch i also have a few for the roof so i'm going to scoot on over there again if you'd like our list of shortcuts be sure to click on the link down below and get that list over to you um, next on the roof, I would like to just to show you really quickly, it's, there's not much to see here, but if you drop down the list under the roof tool, there's a lot of different types of roofs. So if you're not aware of roofs um, and you're about to, you know, go start an insurance restoration business doing roofing, siding, gutters, you'll want to get to know the types of roofs pretty quick. And so this is a great visual to see what the program calls the different types of roofs. So the shortcut for roof, it's not R, R is for room. The shortcut for roof, and the way I re remember this in my own mind, is what you don't want to do, fall off the roof. So F for roof, don't fall off the roof. And uh, you'll see here, we've got the roof tool loaded. And you'll see the dotted lines of the floor plan below because I've sketched some rooms down below. What you can do here when you have the roof in what's called the ghost image, notice I haven't placed it. If I place it, it looks like this. It's gonna turn blue. So right now I have, I have that roof in uh, the ghost image. I can then, while it's still in this, this view, hit my space bar and it will tab through the different types of roofs. I advocate you learn these. Um, just open a dummy estimate and just start to play around with the different types of roofs. Uh, the main ones, are, of course, are gonna be this gable style roof 
and then you're going to see there's the uh, flat or shed style roof and then you're going to have your hip style so you can just kind of play around with these like i said create a sandbox dummy estimate and then um, looking at your roofs in 3d are always a really good learning experience this one right here you can see the the partial hip has that snub nose this is just a basic gable we've got a flat shed and then you've got a hip roof here so um, and then of course you can look at all levels that's a funky looking house but um, that's just one of my big tips for people who are trying to learn you know what exactly to me call these different components it's uh, it's a beautiful thing one last thing I'll show you really quick is you can use your roof tool to go ahead and line up those interior boxes so you've got your interior box of this roof and you've got the exterior box. The interior box is your roof wall line. The exterior are the rakes and eaves. So if I can line up my roof wall line with the exterior wall line of the home below, I actually left click once to place that, I can pull out using that image below, if I have my measurements correctly, pull out the roof. Now you're gonna need to watch your eave and rake uh, depth measurements. So you do need to make sure all of your components on your roof are exactly to the specs of the actual home before this will work. But it's a beautiful thing to see the roof line up, you know, over all the levels. It's really a fun time. So there you go. You can use that sketch diagram below the roof to do that. Um, you can also import an eagle view and then drop down the roof below. For example, that's what this would look like. You can use that roof level to create the floor plan below. However, it's just going to give you a footprint. So um, in order to do that, you would click on the roof, just right click, find the generate rooms tool, and uh, it'll ask you, you know, what do you want to call this new level? What's the ceiling height, the joist height? Be sure to edit all of that to spec. And then it will add a level below, but it's just a room. So you would still need to go in here, you know, square break and create the whole floor plan um, from scratch, but it does give you the exterior walls. Um, for some people, that's good enough. If you're just doing exterior work, you can probably rock and roll with just the footprint of the floor plan, but just another option of something else fun you could do here to create uh, the floor plan below the roof. So. All right, that is everything for our sketch shortcuts for today. Again, download your list down below. You'll find a link. If you like this type of content, let me know by liking this video and subscribing. I don't do a lot of sketch work because a lot of people in our industry, being roofing, siding, gutters focused, don't really get into sketch. But I do believe it's, it's a good tool to have under your belt, just to play around with and just to have in case you ever need a little bit of interior work or if you had to have to add something you know, to the sketch. So please let me know down below in the comments if you have any questions questions on any of these these tools and uh, you know if you like the sketch videos I got plenty of more sketch where this came from I know everything about um, interior stairs all the fun things so I'll be coming back at you next week with another video so I hope you have a great week in your business and I'll see you next Tuesday